Hi everyone, um, so in this video uh, I'm undertaking the process of uh, fabricating the engine bearers. Um, it's basically a framework that welds into the bottom of the boat um, just after frame 7 or over frame 7. Um, I've already cut a hole through the bottom of the, the hull to take the prop tube um, I've run a string line from where I need it to match up along the side of the skeg right through to a position inside where it will meet the rear uh, flange of the engine coupling and what I did was use the string line as a reference point to find the height of the top surface of the engine bearers in relation to the mount points of the engine itself that worked out pretty well, but what I didn't take into account in my initial measurements was the fact that not only does the hull um, angle upwards towards the aft end, but it also angles upwards from the centre line um, to port and starboard because of the shape of the bottom of the boat. So of course as you move the engine bearers out from the centre line they rise up. So after recalculating all of that I've got about uh, 20 millimetres I need to remove from the top of all of the engine bearer plates I've made so far. Um, that's not a big problem, it doesn't take long with the plasma cutter. And once that's done I can cut out the top plates for the bearers and start to weld them in place. So I'll give you a quick look at uh, the recalculation I've done and then um, we'll get on to trimming these plates and, and making the rest of the parts for the engine bearers. Here's my calculations from last week. Um, I'm not sure how clearly you can see these lines but this line here to the centre point and up again to this side that's the, the um, angle of the boat underneath um, here's the, the bottom of the hull and centre point and the flange at the position I'm going to put the engine at the centre of the rear engine flange it needs to be 160mm but of course as I move my bearer plates out to give me room to fit the engine sump and uh, the bottom of the bell housing of course this rises up from the from a level point this line rises up so at the point where I need to put the first bearer plate it's actually 20 mil higher than my reference point over here so basically I've got to trim that 20 mil off so as when I put the, the first plate here to create if you look over here you can see I've drawn it in there the first plate with a cap on it um, that will need to be 20 mil higher so I've got to trim that down to meet the top edge here so that's what I'll be starting off with today okay guys so you can see that um, I've already made some of the uh, engine bearer plates um, cut out the lining holes and in this process all I'm doing is marking them up ready to trim the excess 20 millimeters off um, and to do this I just set them up on the bench and use the plasma cutter to trim the excess away. And once I've cut that edge away, I use a hammer just to knock the dross off. And when you cut with a plasma cutter, it leaves a, a little bead of dross along the side of the cut. And as you can see, it's very easy to just chip it away with the hammer. It leaves a nice clean edge and easy to grind up afterwards. Time for some refreshment. Having smoke home. It's known as smoko in Australia, 
because in the old days we used to smoke, I suppose, and it was called a smoke break and abbreviated to smoko. But it really means tea break. And I like a cup of tea being a pom. That's Australian for any Englishman. Enjoy. I got the first few plates um, up in the boat and welded in here as you can see. Um, the first plate was pretty straightforward and that went in nice and easily. Now to get the outer plate of this particular framework into position, I welded a couple of flat bars across the top you can see there and then just got those level with an angle gauge and that allowed me to make sure the outer web plate will line up correctly at exactly the right height and keep the top of the, the framework level when I put the cap on. So that's what I'm doing here, make sure it's level before I stand the next plate up and, work, and tack weld it in place. <laughs> so keep an eye on this next bit guys, this is a bit of accidental disco dancing by me. So once I got this outer plate positioned and got it marked up ready to tack weld it, what I did is I make sure that I clean the steel really well, make sure there's no dirt, no paint, no residue left on there at all. So as when I weld up I get a nice um, penetration, a nice clean weld. Another important point to remember guys is before you weld, give the area a good clean down with either some thinners, um, I use isopropyl alcohol, uh, make sure I get rid of any oils or greases and contaminants so I get a really good clean weld.
Okay, that's it for now with this video. Um, I hope you found something useful and something informative uh, in the content. And if you enjoy the channel, please do subscribe and remember to click that bell down the bottom and put any queries or questions in the comments below and I'll catch you next time.